What up, guys? Yeah, we've got another Oktoberfest beer today. We are doing Left Hand Brewing Company's Oktoberfest. This is one of the last kind of craft beers I've been able to get my hands on. I'm running on down. So I believe I will have two more craft beers after this, one more import, and then that's, that's all I've been able to get my hands on. And I've looked, but uh, maybe you've had better luck finding more Oktoberfest beers than I have, but I mean, I'll end up having about 25, so I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> I feel like there should be more, but uh, but yeah, I believe pretty much all of the craft beers I've been able to find have been basic, mostly regional. They've been uh, a couple from Arizona, a couple from Colorado. I'll have be doing one from Oregon. And then, uh, you know, your bigger Sam Adams and I had this here in Nevada. But uh, I think Bell's was the only actual one that was really not regional. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But um, if that was a, like an issue for you, like, let me know. I mean, maybe it's just maybe that's how it usually is, but I just haven't been able to find any. But anyways, let's get into the review. I like this can. <laughs> Get in the review and get in the smell. It has like an earthy aroma to it. Very nice. Definitely kind of has more like an amber aroma to it. A little, little nutty. Not much of the maltiness that I'm picking up with my nose. It has kind of like a prunish, plumish nuttiness to it. And almost like a hint of uh, molasses. There's like a, a heavier sweetness to it, kind of like a thickness to it. Also, it poured a little thicker than most of the other beers. But I'm gonna recommend it on Aroma. I think it smells pretty interesting. I'm very interested to uh, try it. Um, this one's at the door. I gotta. Be back in a second. All right, sorry about that. Um, but all right, get back into it, get into the taste. Hmm, that is, that is very interesting. Ah. Dog went up for the water like she always does in all my videos, but I didn't put the water there this time. I gotcha. But it, this has almost a almost like a like a juiciness to it. It has the maltiness, and there is a that kind of heavier sweetness lingering, like a molasses sweetness. But it almost has like, it's kind of juicy in a very weird way. It's so, it's very strange. It's almost like thick and thin at the same time. I know that, that doesn't make any sense, but it's like, it almost drinks thick, but it's actually thin. I don't even know how else to describe that. It's, it's like, It's almost like you're, <laughs> do you remember that, like, what was it, um, it was a, it wasn't a Kool-Aid, it was like a, uh, it came in those, like, little plastic squeezable things, and it was like, they made it so it looked like jello, but you could drink it too, so it was liquid and solid, and, um, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like a very 90s thing where it, like, it kind of was thick, but it was also like thin and juice. And like this, I don't know, you know how like the, the 90s candy and stuff went. Um, this almost has something like that. It, it, it has a very unique thick, thin going, thick, yeah, thick, thin thing going on. Or the barley, ooh, the more I'm having this, the more the barley, that malted barley is really coming out. It is, I'm really getting more of the flavor with each sip. There's almost um, like a smoky peat 
<laughs> um, think to it. It's almost good. We're going on like that that peaty, like uh, whiskey scotch kind of thing going on. There, there's definitely um, something in there. Come on, please. Thank you. I have the water up, and she's still like licking at the, the walls. <laughs> There's always one needy dog or child. Um, but yeah, there's a very... Um, it's definitely... It's getting thicker in the taste. Ooh, this is a... This is a hefty... I, I hadn't looked at any of the information I had in the can yet. This is a hefty 6.6% .6 ABV. That, that by far and away blows out every other Oktoberfest beer I've had. Um, 6.1 might have been the highest thus far. Most of them are like somewhere between 5.7, 5.9, maybe a few that kind of just touched that six point. This is by far way stronger than anything else that I've had, any of the other Oktoberfest beers. That might be where some of that, um, that peaty maltiness is coming from. It, you can taste, it tastes like something that's, that's higher in alcohol content, um, definitely. Hmm. I feel like, okay, if you're looking for a beer that has like an extra, it's extra toasted, like, yeah, extra, almost like burnt toast, um, like malted, kind of burnt, um, subtle, like molasses sweet. It's very, very earthy. If that's something you're looking for, I say absolutely go ahead and get grab this left hand. I think you can get left hand pretty much anywhere. Um, for me, I'm not. A, it's getting to the point where it's a little too um, smoky. Um, it's almost like 6.6. .6, I think is the cap for how high this thing could go. If the alcohol content was any higher, it would just be. Um, it'd just be too much. It's already kind of like like poking at that um, glass ceiling of too much for me. It's right at the edge where, yeah, I will still drink it. Anything more than that, and it would have just been over the top. This is one of those cases where I feel like the, the, um, the higher alcohol content doesn't really help it. I almost feel like it detracts just a little bit. Um, I think if they had brought some of those levels down, it'd be, for me, it'd be much better. But again, that's just me. If you, if you like that kind of earthy, ultra, like, charcoal -y, burnt smokiness thing going on, if you like that in the style of beer, absolutely, go, go for it. Um, I don't think it tastes bad. That's just, it's just not really doing it. Like, it's a little too much in that department for me, so I'm going to give it a half. I'm basically giving it a half because I realize there are people that will enjoy it. Like this, there are people that will like this. It's not just like it's a suck ass beer that's poorly made. It's done well if that's what you like. It's just not really what I like, so I'm gonna give it a half. Um, all right, next category is Valley Press. And yeah, you know, I pretty much recommended Valley Press for all the Oktoberfest beers. None of them have really been crazy expensive. I think they're all fair price. Um, if you're getting, uh, you know, a craft beer for two twenty-five, I think it's more than fair. So, I think it's fine. I will recommend it for both price. Next category is distinction, and yes, this beer is very distinct for a number of reasons. One, it has that that higher, like alcohol maltiness to it, but it doesn't feel like it's. It still feels a little bit more refined than some of them I have. It's not like that rough around the edge maltiness. Well, I don't know if, if that's the that rough around the edge maltiness is comes from like over carbonated. Maybe that's where from that's how that comes about at least for me because then you like feel it on the side of your mouth. This doesn't have that. I think the uh, all that it, it tastes fine. It's more refined. Um, but you can taste, it tastes like, like the higher alcohol content, which um, obviously sets it apart. That's something that you're 
taking into consideration when you're buying beer. So that obviously is one thing that takes that sets it apart. Um, and just like it has that kind of like strange, thick but thin texture drinkability to it. I don't know. Like I'm not. I have, I have no idea what's making it do that. Why I'm getting that kind of uh, uh, vibe from it. That might just totally be me, uh, but it's definitely uh, a stronger Oktoberfest beer, but it's also very, not very, but it's also different from a lot of the other Oktoberfest beers I've had. So because of that, it's definitely distinct. So I'll give Left Hand uh, credit for that. Um, you made a distinct Oktoberfest beer without making it like be just really funky or odd or bad. You know, this is definitely some people that could get into this thing. So I will recommend it on distinction. Uh, drinkability is where it kind of, for me, comes back down uh, to earth. That higher extra, that extra alcohol content just makes it not the easiest to dr like smoothly drink. I feel like I'd have to break it up. Uh, maybe if I was eating this with like, or uh, drinking this with like a nice like juicy burger or whatever, and I can kind of like alternate, alternate with it. That might work. That might help. You know. Just, bounce back and forth but um, it's not something for me that I would just be able to just go quickly easily smoothly anything like that a little too strong for me or at least for for drinking um, just cracking it open and drinking it straight out of a can um, I think this is definitely one you want to pour but um, yeah you know so I mean drinkability it, it drinks okay. It's not something that I'm going to crush, so I'll give it a half for that. And, all right, last category is would I buy it again? And uh, me, personally, probably not. It's it's just not – it's not the kind of Oktoberfest beer that I'm looking for. You know, as I've said in a couple of these other Oktoberfest beer uh, reviews, you only have a very small window for the Oktoberfest beers. Especially some of these um, ones that don't come out till the very end of September, which is why that that, that kind of drives me crazy. The Oktoberfest beers that wait till the end of September to come out, because by the time the end of October hits, you're already well flooded with fall beers, pumpkin beers, you know, spiced beers, you know, all the extra apple cider, spiked cider that comes out, you don't have a lot of time with them. So I really wish they'd come out end of August. I feel like then that gives you a whole six weeks to get around to them. Without that, you're really kind of like cutting corners, trying to get to whatever you can. And um, there's just not enough time for me to, you know, kind of keep drinking multiple Oktoberfest beers. So I've really got to focus on which ones I like the best and pretty much cut everything else out. And this just isn't, it's, it's just not my kind of uh, Oktoberfest beer. Uh, maybe it is for you. Maybe you will totally dig it. So um, it's worth trying if you like that extra smoky toastiness. If that is not the kind of thing that you like, skip it. Um, you won't miss it. So just keep that in mind if you look at you see this in the, in the store, you know, ultra smoky, charcoaly, whatever. Yes. If not, don't go for it. But I, I, I won't be buying again. Um, but I mean, I've had good luck with Left Hand Brewing Company for before other beers, so I'll give others a whirl um, later. But all right, that is my review of Left Hand Brewing Company's Oktoberfest uh, Martin Lager. Have you had this yet? Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And would you be interested in me doing another one of these uh, just straight, just one style, like, series? Um, let me know. I'd have to... I'd like to try to uh, focus on one particular style so it's easier to compare. Um, like... If there's a pumpkin beer, if it's something very specific, um, that'd be easier to do. Um, not like a seasonal kind of thing. Don't say IPA because then there's like 50 gazillion that would just never end. Um, but uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments, whatever. I have a few. I'm going to break in a few of those seltzers. I've never had one and I always rip on them. But I feel like I should probably give it a whirl. And so I will try my first seltzer on this channel probably sometime next week um, when I'm done with all of these uh, five um, beers and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, that's it. 
And so for myself and for our left-hand group companies like Toberfest, take it easy.